Okay, we should be good to go. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, the, the recording stuff can be really tricky sometimes. Uh, I'm stop using the go-to webinar. It was good 70, 80% of the time, but when you did something and you didn't want to have to redo it, it was a bummer when it screwed up. So this is uh, screen flow. It's only from Max. All right, with that, let's just jump into it. Once again, uh, it's recording, so if you've got any questions, whenever I come across something, just go ahead and uh, type in your question, and I will answer it after the presentation. So with that, let's begin. Hey, this is, whoa, let's go back. There we go. I don't know, it was moving a little bit too fast. All right, hey, this is Glendon Cameron, and I'm going to let you know what I'm doing with this. I am revamping the Craigslist course, the Craigslist book. Craigslist, early 2012, has made a lot of changes. And I will admit, it kind of threw me in the beginning because I was used to just owning Craigslist. But I sat back and I came up with a plan and I've put that plan into play and I've gotten some great results. So this is what uh, these results have come to. So I'm going to share that with you. It's going to be a new audio book at some point. I'm not giving a date because of all the projects that are going on. Uh, it'll also be an ebook and it'll also be a workshop because I think that they've done everything that they can. Some of the changes have been great. Some of the changes have been maddening. But this is the beauty of Craigslist. It is totally saturated. Now, I'm going to tell you about my Craigslist story. I found Craigslist some point in 2000, I believe. I was still in commercial office furniture. And there was something I can't remember were we looking for like some installers or something but I just happened upon Craigslist and I fell in love with it totally 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 fell in love with it I was just going through the free section and <coughs> excuse me and the free section was nothing like it is now I mean it would be maybe a month full of stuff on one page it was crazy it was crazy uh, I got my first Gmail account off of Craigslist if you remember when Gmail came out, you just couldn't sign up. You had to get an invite from someone who was a beta user. I bought and sold cars on Craigslist. I found my first warehouse on Craigslist, actually the second one since it was from the uh, same landlord. It has been, and to this day, is still a very robust resource. You know, just keeping it to the scope of business, you know, I've gotten housing off Craigslist, I've rented houses. There, there's so many things that you can do on Craigslist if you have the right information. But just to let you know what I've been doing, because, you know, we're going on 15 years of me being on Craigslist. It's, it's kind of like getting long in the tooth here. Now, 2000 to 2012, I'm going to term those the money years. You know, Craigslist was pretty much a license to print money. If you put something up, people contacted you instantly. They didn't wait around because it was moving so fast. If it was something hot, it went. And people didn't really dicker on price the way that they do now. I'm going to say the dickering really increased about 2008, 2009. That's when it got really ridiculous. But still, you were getting such volume. Even with that, you were still making really good money. Like I said, early 2012, Chris, they started making changes. And it was a freaking challenge for me for the first time ever to sell on Craigslist. At one point, I was actually selling more on my personal Facebook page than I was selling on Craigslist. And I thought, why? And I remember, I own that market. Most of the people on my page knew me. It was, I mean, I only had like, what, 1,700 Facebook friends and only 10 or 20% of the people see anything that you post. So that's like three or 400 people. And I was making more sales with three or 400 people than I was with a site with billions. And that's like, okay, is it a pricing issue? And sometimes it is a pricing issue. But what it really is, it's a saturation issue. To illustrate, going back when eBay instituted watch, we noticed the bidding activity dried up over a week. You didn't have to bid on the item to get it anymore. So people's interest wasn't as keen. Same thing with Craigslist. Oh, you look at Craigslist for a phone at 12 a.m. 
and you have to go to work, something happens, you go back at three, there's like 10 more of that phone that were posted since you were gone, or maybe 20. So in your mind, you're like, I don't have to rush. The market's saturated. I can give a good deal. And you can. So this is my, you know, I've been talking about my new recommendation, uh, new game, new plan. You you have to um, really look at this thing differently because the metamorphosis of Craigslist is everyone is like Craigslist is still the place to go to sell, which for those who are uninformed is bad. But if you have the right information, it's a great place to source now because there's so many people there. They are just dropping stuff. Uh, the desk that I'm on, I actually done doing this webinar on. I got it, I got it off Craigslist, and they were originally wanting 200 bucks for these desks. But when I got to them, I got this thing for 100 bucks, and it's a commercial, heavy commercial off grade desk that I'll probably have for a long time because it suits my needs. But it's great for buying cheap and sourcing cheap. You just have to really come up with a plan. Now, I would say there's two ways. You can still sell on Craigslist. You can still sell on Craigslist. You can always sell on Craigslist. It's a matter of product, positioning, and price. You put up a $2,000 MacBook Pro for 800 bucks, it'll be gone in an hour. Because someone could buy that and flip it on eBay for about 14, maybe 1500 bucks. So it would be gone in an hour. So that type of stuff always goes. But when you're trying to get that 14, 1500, then you kind of run into some time. When I was flipping, buying and flipping Max, because I'll tell you the story of what made me do it. You know, it's a Toshiba laptop. I don't know if you saw the video where that sucker used to get so freaking hot that. I'm processing videos and it's like fans going and all of a sudden snip pop it snaps and it goes off and I could not turn it back on until it cooled off. It was increasingly frustrating for my workflow because I was trying to do more videos, the more videos that I put up, the more money I made on YouTube. So I heard that Macs were better. I was and understand it's 2009, 2010. I'm still a storage auction guy. I'm still cheap as hell. It's like thousand dollars for a computer i'll just go over here and get something from best buy for three four hundred bucks or i'll get two and i did the research and I did the research and it just kept coming back so my first mac i bought on craigslist from this guy who was going into the navy and it was only six months old and still had the warranty on it so i go to his place i play around with it i buy it uh, i don't really break him down too much because it's six months old still has the warranty so i get it come home i started doing videos and it is like night and freaking day it is like totally night and freaking day so i was like ooh, and then i started looking and it's like hey that one had an i3 chip uh the one i'm using now has an i5 and my laptops are i7 which are even way better so to get these these machines i just start buying macs on craigslist and flipping them i wasn't making tremendous money i was making like 200 bucks here 300 bucks there because they're very expensive and people do not just sell these things cheap they just don't so over the course of six months i worked my way up to two brand new macs using the money that i flipped i got from flipping uh, macs on craigslist and I'll tell you, my laptop was thirty-five hundred bucks, and this uh, iMac here is, was thirteen hundred. So, like five grand in computers, and I got that money from flipping stuff on Craigslist. And that's another thing you can do: you can flip for a purpose. You can, you, you know, it, it just having that gold helps you so much. So that's how I got my Max without like going deep in debt or using money out of my savings accounts or putting it on credit cards. Just flipping, flipping, flipping. Now. That's one of the reasons I know it's a great place to source. And, and there's a lesson in what I just told you. If you can find a very popular item and you're not a staunch margin person where you got to make 100% margin, a 200% margin. Say you do a deal, and it's, you know, it's 150 and there's only like 40, 50 bucks profit in a deal. But you do 10 of those deals a week. 
It's four hundred dollars for a lot of people. That's just not very exciting. I learned in the storage auction business. Sometimes deals like that are the best deals you can get. The money's on the table. Take the money because many products are like ice cream on a hot summer day. They have an expiration date on their pricing. At some point, it's going down. It's going down. So the longer you hold on to it, unless it's just a true antique or some collectible or something exceptional, the price is going down. So you you could pick a category, cell phones, and just one. You can do iPhones. You can do Androids. And if you can make, you know, not travel too far because you have to factor in your gas and meeting people. But if you could find something that you know about and that you could sell or fix and flip, you can do that one thing and make tremendous money on Craigslist. But here's the new plan. This is what I'm recommending for everybody. I've had a few consults. I've actually done some of this. And I'm going to teach my daughter when she gets up here how to do this stuff. So find 100 things. Uh, let's see. Nope, I'm getting ahead of myself. All right. Craigslist is swamped with product. I went over that. And as you know, like in the furniture section, that page will roll over in minutes and there's a hundred listings per page. But with the right mindset, what I'm telling you is you can still make great money if you're looking at Craigslist as the right in the right eyes with the right perspective. Now I'm gonna give you some ratios. In the olden days, 2011, I'm not gonna count 2012. 2012 was still selling, but I started hitting, running into problems. Uh, if you knew what you're doing, I mean, I had stuff that I bought in storage units, took a picture of it, put it on Craigslist. It was sold before I got home. Good days. And uh, typically, I was listing 80% of the stuff that we got out of storage units and other places, and probably sourcing maybe 20% of our products from Craigslist during those lean times. But everything's, you know, we're going to do a 180. Um, there. Something else just to say. There's more places to sell now than there used to be. It was eBay, Yahoo Auctions, a few other sites, but eBay and Yahoo were the leaders. There was some other stuff. And then whatever you could put up together in the warehouse, it wasn't only selling, you know, like eBay, Etsy, Amazon was, you know, you could have, you know, Amazon was still kind of new to the resale stuff. But you have eBay. Etsy, Amazon, Facebook, YouTube, back on Craigslist, Craigslist, yoursite.com. So sourcing from Craigslist, you have many different places to put your stuff. It is no longer what it used to be. Just a few predominant places like eBay and Amazon have the most traffic. But I want you to think about this. Ponder this. You have an Etsy account and you sell Let's just say beaded bracelets. And you make them yourself. But it costs you two bucks to sell them. I mean, two bucks to make the beaded bracelets because you're, you're making them in bulk. And you sell them for 15 bucks with free shipping. You're like nine bucks profit. Seven, seven fifty to eight fifty profit. And you're selling these suckers like a hundred a week. You know, you, there's things that sell like that. There, there's, a, there's things like that. But the thing is, you have to figure out what it is for you. Now, as a staunch hustler, you got to have a money plan. You got to have a plan of attack. Going back to what I was telling you about how I got my Mac computers. There was a plan. I wasn't just, you know, what I was talking, I, was just, I just wasn't being an opportunistic hustler. I was just like, oh, I'm going to get this, get a little money, maybe make two, three hundred bucks, go out and have a nice steak dinner. That's cool on occasion. That's fun on occasion. And I encourage you to do that on occasion. But your main deal is making money for a reason, not just money to blow. So this is the thing. I want you to think of 100 items that you'd like to sell. It could be clothing. It could be gerbils. It could be uh, running sheep. Dog, I mean, I'm, sorry, I'm being facetious, but 100 items that you like to sell. And the reason that you need so many things come in seasons. If you have 100 items small items, games, coins, uh, computer stuff, Macs, whatever. You've got 100 items. Once you get these this list together and you start, you know, I'm going to show you later on in this webinar, learn how to do the automated searches on Craigslist, you will have more options for money because this is what kills people. 
everyone is trying to play it safe and playing it safe is limited exposure. I'm not going to put too much money out. I'm not going to work too hard. If what I'm doing works, I'll work hard on it. And that is a misnomer. Your habits define you. If you're not used to working hard all the time, you're not going to work hard all the time. If you're always trying to get over or try to, quote, work smart, not hard. That quote is misused because sometimes working hard is working smart. They didn't build Google by slacking off. There was an incredible amount of effort in building Google, building Apple, building Dell, actually building four more companies. But I mean, you don't build these companies and these incredible sources of income just not working hard. It's not going to happen. And a lot of people get sucked into that paradigm of I'm not going to work that hard because I'm going to work smart and actually don't have the results they could if they actually worked hard. So this is going to be overwhelming. It's going to take you a few weeks, but this is the beauty. Even before you get to your 100 items, you'll start finding stuff. And say you got 100 items that you're looking for. Every week, you're going to find 10, 20, 30. You're going to find stuff to sell. You cannot make money if you don't have stuff to sell. So with this method, and this is catered to you, there everyone has their thing. You know, you might know a lot about Levi jeans. You may know a lot about Nikes. You may know a lot about um, baby clothes. There are so many categories that you can make money on if you put it in the container of a plan and have a framework and methodology of a plan of action. There are at least six baby clothes consignment stores in my neighborhood. It wouldn't be open if people weren't buying baby clothes. They take them there. They buy clothes. So understand, there's a lot of things you can make money. And this is the big thing. And this is the promise of the disruptive economy. Instead of uh, being mad, you can use it. Now, this is brand new. You could just go in there and create a notification. And what it will do is search Craigslist for you. Let us say it's beta. And but it's 100 percent free for those of you who don't want to spend any money. Just, you know, try it out. It's pretty cool. Like I said, look at the number until the notification is created. Not a lot of people are using this. Not a lot of people are using this, which means you can go in and if you're doing a robust uh, searching, maybe the developers will listen to some of your inputs. You can email them or so on and so forth. Now, that's one. Now, this is the one I use. Now, this if you have Macs. This software does not work on Macs. It only works on Windows-based machines. So, if you don't, if you have a Mac, just letting you know, it's going to be a problem. <laughs> it's going to be a problem. Uh, I, I just went out and got like a real cheap, like one of those little micro Mac, not Mac, micro. I mean, one of those uh, Chromebooks. Some like a Chromebook, but it's not a Chromebook. It was like a hundred bucks. Because the only thing I do is do these searches on it and have them emailed to other places. But you got a free version with a banner, then you can pay for one version. I suggest if you're going to do a lot of searches, pay. And this downloads to your computer. So there's a certain interface going on. But it's for what it costs and what it does, it's outstanding. And it's totally, totally outstanding. You just cannot really get past this. I mean, it's freaking awesome. Once you get your list together now this is something that people don't do look for unusual shit everyone's looking for hot shit but look for unusual shit um i sold now this gets a little weird i had a bunch of stuffed armadillos and i was like i got them out of a storage unit oh, this guy was weird he was super weird i've never told this story on, on uh, youtube and i may never will because it's just weird but he had about 12 stuffed armadillos and they weren't just big armadillos. It was the mom armadillo and the father armadillo and little baby armadillos. And it was just like, when I saw it, I was just like, cause they had, the unit was old and it was like spider webs and there was dust and they were already creepy looking. Just put some spider webs and some dust on it. It was even worse. We didn't mess with that for about two months because we were just creeped out. But they were in the warehouse and one day my partner cleaned them up and they didn't look so bad. We put those bad boys on Craigslist. They were gone in an hour. I was amazed. We should ask for more money. So just because it may repulse you 
It may not be your cup of tea. <clears throat> Excuse me. It may not be something that you would buy. It's amazing what sells. So, you know, you can look for clowns. You can look for uh, the. Let's see what they call marionettes, um, the mannequins, not the mannequins, uh, the little puppets where you put your hand in the back, make them. Those things I've come across a few of those in units that were authentic. Those sold for big money. Just to let you know, there's so much stuff out there. And when you're doing your hundred items, you know, I'm going to give you some ratios in a minute. You, you got to think about that. Dig in your own sandbox. You know, uh, I know what a lot of the writers, if I was a coder, I could write, I could create a product for writers because I know one of the things that irritates us in, you know, video stuff. Uh, there's a guy who makes certain things because he didn't have the money to buy the proper mounts. So he made them. Got the same results for one tenth the cost. So dig into your own sandbox and just come up with stuff that you know about. I I bought a unit <laughs> full of Yaki number 10. I don't know what was up with that. It was brand new. And that stuff sold like hotcakes. It was kind of crazy. And if you ever come across any used weave in the unit, throw it away. Just throw it away. Don't, don't try to sell it. If it's used, throw it away. Because I got that question on YouTube years ago. And I was like, throw it away. <coughs> throw it away. All right. Now, this is what I call feeder hustling. Drill down your search for present marketplaces. Meaning, there's already, <coughs> excuse me, there's already a large group of people who are looking for this stuff. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Like, uh, I will give you like one of the group, one of the genres that I write my books in. <coughs> it's under a pen name. I don't do any advertising. I don't talk about it on YouTube. No one knows except me and my other. And the books sell because the marketplace is there. You can write a book about vampires. And it'll sell custom marketplaces there. And you'll hear, oh, God, no, not another vampire book. Oh, that's from a person who's not in that genre, who's from the outside looking in. And the people who are in that genre, wow, another vampire book. I can't wait to read it. So it's a different perspective depending on if you're in it or you're on the outside looking in. And there's a lot of people who are on the outside looking in making comments for that marketplace. And they don't really know that marketplace because they're not part of it. So... You know, some other things. Now, check out the cultures of the platform. Etsy has a different culture. eBay has a different culture. Amazon really doesn't have a culture because Amazon does everything possible to keep you away from their customers. So, there may be a culture of sellers, but there's right no real culture per se. Now, going back to your ratios, when you're doing your 100 items, this is, you know, this is just a template, what I used. You can do your own thing. Because, once again... When you dig into your sandbox, you may have information that I don't have. That's the beauty of the human condition. You can know something that could be very profitable to you where your ratios would be 50% needs, 50% wants, because you could be a member of a group. You could just know that, like, hey, all of these motorcycle people, oh, they pay crazy money for these saddlebags. I don't know that because I don't ride motorcycles anymore. I kind of know a little bit about the culture, but I'm not in it and I'm far removed to the tune of two decades. But if you're in that culture, you know what the culture wants, you know what they like, and you know what they'll pay. Same thing with bikes. Same. There, there, there's a lot of things that you can sell that are niche and hobbyist type stuff because I know several cyclists. I know several people who have paid anywhere from two to $7,000 for their bikes. These are road bikes. These are not motorcycles. These are bicycles. And they paid that before modifications. That's how passionate these people are about that sport. So if you are in a member, you would know what people are doing and you could take advantage. Now, this was my old ratio. 70% needs, 20% wants, and 10% I just got to have this shit. Because as we were selling the warehouse, I just noticed that people may want something, but if they don't have the money, you have a hundred bucks and you got to get something that you need or you're going to get something you want. If you're a responsible person, you're going to get what you need. There's some people that was like, oh, no. Uh, so what if rent's late? I'm going to go ahead and get this hundred fifty dollars shirt. That's not everybody. Most people, I believe, are responsible. Most people are going to do the right thing with their money as best they can. So you, you really, once again, in your sandbox, 
what you know, what you discovered, those ratios could completely completely different. They could be 70% once, I mean, 70% once, 20% needs, and it, it could be totally. But this ratio came to us because we were in the storage auction business. And also, our, our sourcing was different than the sourcing that I'm teaching you how to do now. We got stuff and we didn't know what we had. I mean, the door went up. Yeah, you saw what was in the front. You didn't know what was in the back. You didn't you didn't know about the Ben Franklin, the Franklin Mint Baccarat paperweights. You didn't know you had no clue what was in there, and that was part of the fun. But what I'm teaching you to do is to know what you're going after and bring it into certain marketplaces so they'll eat it up. It, it's actually better. It's way better because when you're buying for a marketplace that you know about or you're discovering, the sales are faster and there's not as much hackling because you know what that marketplace will pay. Now, this is the big thing. This is the big thing. People get this information and don't take action. I'll tell you a quick story that pissed me off and this is the reason that I started doing webinars. I was on YouTube and someone that I knew bought my book was asking a question that was answered in the book. It was about toward about the 70% mark, which lets me know this person paid $99 for the book, because that's what they were going for at the time, and did not read it. I, this is what I'm telling you. People do this all the time. They will buy information, sign up for courses, and will not take action. If you don't take action, it, it, it's just not going to be good for you. It's just not going to work out for you. There's a little bitch that was a member of the group who came in, he was one of the founders, didn't take action. This guy damn near went bankrupt. He had to move to a cheaper place. He had all type of nasty financial issues. And I found out because we know several of the people. And if he had just, when he came in, took the information and went to work, went to freaking work, some of those bad things wouldn't have happened. So I, if I can't impress anything else on you, the stuff I just gave you, if you do it, you will get results and results will equal to money. If you do it, if you do some of it, you'll get some results. If you have to, you'll get half. But if you go out and take the time to develop a list of 100 things that you can sell, do your marketplace research, go out and get the stuff, as they say in the hood, for the low, low, get it cheap. Feed it into these marketplaces, you will make money. I guarantee you, you cannot help but make money. You will start making money before you get to the 100 items. And I already know some people want to, like, they'll get to 30 or 40 and they start making money. I'm good. They'll stop because they're making money. So if you get to that full 100 things and rock out the automatic searches, and you know, you're doing a lot, you're going to need the cubics. You will make money. You will make money. Now, I will give some exceptions. If you're out there in prairie land and you don't have access to Craigslist, you're going to have to do something different. And we'll talk about that in future webinars. Because everyone doesn't live in a major metropolitan city like I do, and I know that. But a good 60% of the country does or lives close to one. Maybe 70%. So, uh, there's a guy in the scan power, the Amazon FBA group. This guy lives out in the middle of the woods. You know what he does? He goes to major cities with his money. He has a travel kit. He has his scanner. He has his printer. He goes out, spends the weekend in town, loads up, ships the stuff from where he is, doesn't take it back home with him, and he goes back home. So what I'm saying to you is if you're a little far out, you're going to have to travel. That's it. And the guy, you, you got to understand. You know, where we're heading as a country, as a world, jobs are disappearing as we know them because of automation. So I'm not trying to scare you. I'm trying to give you the truth here. In five years, a lot of what you see that's going on with people being hurt, having issues, it's going to be worse because we're in a very strange place that you can have a degree or two or three and still be making minimum wage or less because the skill sets that you have are not marketable to this new and disruptive marketplace. 
Now, with you being an entrepreneur, you being a hustler, that's a totally different ball game because you're creating your own world. So I urge you to take action. I urge you to take action today. I urge you to start working on this today. And you, you'll be amazed. You'll be amazed at what you can do in the next 90 days. All right. I'm going to open up the floor to questions. And yes, this is being recorded. All right, here's Isaiah. What do you got? What do you got going on? <laughs> I'll answer it, but I don't have anything to do with Craigslist. How much money should someone put up for retirement? Okay. Typically, if you're making, I'm just going to throw these numbers out because what my guy told me, if you're making two hundred thousand a year, you want to put away about four to five million. So ten times your income. And this is why you get 10 times your income and you're going to bite off five or six percent every year. Hopefully, if you're getting a decent interest rate, your principal, which will be the money that's in the fund, will stay there and you'll be living strictly off interest. So as long as your investments are working, you're good to go. Now, I'm going to tell you my retirement plan. I'm going to tell you two events. 2006. I liquidated 1.2 million out of my portfolio, which was everything in it. I had some huge bills. I had a business deal, the stuff with my former partner, not my uh, not Francine, but another deal, and another business, and an SBA loan. That shit, I got into a crazy amount of debt in nine months. The business lasted six, and between some stuff that went on with my divorce and everything. I was in the tune of massive debt, like seven figure debt. But I, you know, I was just like, well, I got money in here. So I looked at everything and paid it all off. So 2006, I had to start all over again, but I wasn't worried because the storage auction business was great. And I was putting away a lot of money. Now this is my retirement plan because, and I'm going to give it to you why I'm going in this direction. We saw the meltdown of the markets these last few years. So you could do the right thing. Let's take the people who put their money with Madoff. There were people, Kara Sedgwick and uh, Kevin Bacon, I think they're married, if you didn't know. They lost to the tune like 20 million bucks. Gone. Never going to get it back again. Gone. 20 mil. There's going to be more of that in the future. You think you're going to be putting your money in the right place and something bad's going to happen. It happened with Madoff. It even happened with supportably reputable firms. So here you are saving money, putting it away, doing what you're supposed to, and something happens. That kind of scared me. So I'm thinking, let's create perpetual income. That's my thing. Create a business like, you know, Isaiah, you're a young guy. You create a business now and say it takes 20 years to grow. But in that 20 year, it's spinning off. $150,000 a year for you and you don't have to be there because it's big enough that you've hired people they're running it you can be in Switzerland on the apps and your business is still making you 150 that's my new retirement plan creating perpetual sources of income versus trying to work extremely hard to put all this money away but you're, you're you are withholding joy out of your life you're sacrificing, you're not buying nice stuff for yourself and you're putting away and putting away and it may not be there. And this is the other side. Say you do all of that and nothing bad happens to your money. You put it in a good company, Hancock or something like that, USA. Nothing happens. But by the time you're 67, 68, you're so broken down that you can't enjoy the money. I, I like to say that I'm halfway retired right now because I have a tremendous amount of freedom that most people don't have. So I can come and do what I want. Uh, I can work, you know, actually, a lot of y'all don't know it. I was actually visiting a friend and was doing webinars. I have that kind of lifestyle, which is way more appealing to me. So, you know, you've got to sit down with yourself and say, what do you want to do? Because I'm giving you my plan. I don't plan on, I'm like I said, I'm halfway retired. Like if I wanted to go to Hawaii next week, I could. And I could still work. And I could still enjoy myself. So I'm halfway there. But I enjoy what I do. If you're going to play the traditional game, you've got to play it untraditionally. Uh, I'll give you another thing. And this is a reason I was able to get to 1.2 million. I used to live on 50% of my income and invest half. But it was a high income. 
So you got to start thinking like that. Because if you do normal stuff, because you know a lot of people won't tell you, everyone should be saving around 30% of their income. And that's for most people is just untenable because 30% of your income goes for taxes. If you have a job, then you're saving 30%. You're going to live on 30%. So you need to be making six figures to make that work for most people. Or you need to be really, really disciplined. But that's the thing. Because the, like the typical thing, 10 times your highest annual income. But there's so many bad things that's going on. I mean, the city of Detroit bankrupt. The city... And what makes that such a nascent event is in the 50s, Detroit was the number two, had the number two highest GPA behind the United States. The city of Detroit was number two in G. Yes, that's what makes that so sad. So understand, it is better in my opinion. I'm just giving you my opinion because my uh, financial guy thought I was nuts. Um I'm working on several businesses, ideals, um, starting one for my daughter. And that's the plan because I think if you do it right, you know, with you being your age, if you work it right for the next four or five years, you can get to a position where I'm at, where, no, you're not retired, but you control your time because that is the key, being able to control your time. Because when someone else is controlling your time, you have to go to a job. Uh, I met someone who had to move because company said, we need you to go to Atlanta. He didn't want to move, but he knew he couldn't get another job. So he moved. So you think about that. Like there, there's a lot of stuff that goes on. So, you know, that's my long answer to your question. Yeah. I'm not going to give you traditional advice because I don't uh, live a traditional life. And like I said, you know, Go talk to a financial analyst and, you know, make because it's your life and make your own decision. I'm doing what I think is best for me and my family, just based on the fact of what the hell I've been through and knowing how you can have a lot of money. Because I'll tell you, I have assets, but I don't have a lot of money. A lot of stuff I got from, you know, there's some things from the storage auction business I kept because I knew that, you know, that they're, they're not, you know, they're not going down in value. So. That's kind of like my extra next egg, and I make pretty good every month. But like I said, after getting sick, after watching my partner die from cancer, actually seeing her in the hospice, you know, talking on Monday, next Monday she passed. I mean, I just saw her pretty much just say, I'm leaving this place. It made me change my whole outlook on life. You know, I'm more about fun, like, you know, talking to you guys. And I'm just like, thanks for everybody that joined the Hustler Mindset Project. This is fun. This is fun. This is something I can see myself doing forever and forever because it renews me. And you got to kind of think about that for yourself. What are you going to do for you that you can do forever or really enjoy? Because you can chase money and make money. You can definitely chase money and make money. But it can be soul sucking. If there's no other joy for aspects to it. That's why I can say with a great deal of clarity, I make way less money doing this than I do in the storage auction business. But going back to mental money, I have way more spiritual wealth, more freedom, wealth, more clarity. My health is this is the best my health has been in a long time. So those type of things to me are invaluable. You know, it's this is, you know, living a life of design and intent. For some people, they I have friends who think I'm nuts, you know, because I could be making way more money, living in a big house again, doing all other stuff and have four bleeding ulcers. <laughs> so <laughs> it, that's my thing. Uh, any more questions pertaining to Craigslist? I will do some more uh, open ended just Q&A's because I've noticed that there are certain questions that keep coming up regardless of what the webinar is about. And I, I'll just set those up because it seems that what people want. So that's it. No questions. Um, there will be more of this Craigslist stuff because what I'm waiting for is to get this thing going with my daughter. And I will tell you there's something else that's in the works. I have a friend who's created a product and I'm going to be working with her. And we've got some plans and it's not fully fleshed out, but that's going to be something that comes to you in the Hustler University because the stuff that I'm going to do for her, I'm going to just... You'll get it in real time. It's totally different, but it'll be great. You know, you're going to like it. You're really going to like it. 
It's just a matter of getting it set up. So if there are no questions to Craigslist, I'm going to shut this down. Since I've got my new software, it'll be recorded and up probably today or tomorrow in Hustle University for those who missed it. All right. So for those of you who shared your wonderful Saturday with me, I want to say thanks and I'll see you on the good side.